Well, hello. This is about a project that generates electronic dance music. Um, and the generation of the music is based on user training. So my name is Rick Leineker, and I'll be the sponsor should you decide to uh, select this project. And it is fall of 2020. So this is a multi-year project. You're not going to be able to finish it. Um, so for that reason, you got to make sure your documentation is really good. You have to make sure all your code is clean, um, because uh, as I see it, this will probably be a three-year project. Uh, once the entire project has been completed, that means three years from now, uh, the program will be able to generate EDM music uh, based on individual user training. By the way, I just realized EDM music is redundant because it's electronic dance music music, so sorry about that. I should change these slides, but I'm not going to. So this year, this first year, will be uh, percussion, the drum line, and the bass line. So all we're going to do this first year is produce um, the drum part and the bass part. If we get that done and it's really good, I'm going to be super happy. The program will save the generated music as a MIDI file. MIDI files is really generic, uh, old format. Now I have I, I wrote a, a MIDI uh, library, so I've got a C-sharp MIDI library that you can use. Um, so it'll be, but anyway, once you create the MIDI file, then uh, it can be loaded into a digital audio workstation. Now, before I go too far, I said I had a MIDI library. So what, I, what I'm going to caution you about is you're not going to be able to go out there and, and grab a bunch of libraries and just throw them, throw them at the project and, and use them. The only libraries I'm, I'm going to really want you to use is... Uh, my MIDI library to save, and then you're going to use TensorFlow and or Keras for the, the machine learning. I had a student uh, group do this project about two or three years ago, and they really didn't do any work. All they did was was hook into these online, um, um, these online things, these online APIs, and use them. So they they didn't do a single thing really. Uh, it was a really big disappointment. But what you need to do is is take this as, as a really serious project and um, if you're going to be lazy, please don't pick this project because I've already had gone through that with one other group. Um, so, additional audio workstation is, is a program like Cubase. That's what I use. I have a purchase copy of Cubase, um, and it really doesn't matter what what DAW you use as long as you can import MIDI. So, essentially, what's going to happen on your final presentation for the committee, you're going to use the software, and you'll you'll have your your trained. Um, for your individual taste, you're, so you're going to go ahead and create a MIDI file, and then I want you to go ahead and load it into the DAW and play it for the, the committee. And then what we're going to do is take someone else's trained um, training and, and create another one to show, and then load it into the DAW, and then show um, show the committee how how these these are two different pieces based on uh, individual preferences. So that's really the point of this whole project. Um, it's supposed to run on Windows 10. You know, I know at a certain point we could probably uh, go to. We, I'm sure we we could go to um, uh, Macintosh and, and probably even Linux. Um, so for that reason, what we should probably do is is try to keep it as close to .NET Core as possible, so that when we do, you know, it, years down the road when we go to Macintosh and or Linux, we can we can easily do it. Um, it'll be a WPF application. Uh, you'll use Visual Studio and the C Sharp language. For the training, though, the training is is done uh, in Python. Is it, Python is much better for the training. So, uh, and that'll be separate. I'm not asking you to to train from the WPF program. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use Python for the training. But then the WPF program will load in the the training data. There are C Sharp uh, bindings that you can use. And once, once the data is trained, you can load it into C Sharp and use it. So, um, so we're going to start with straightforward music. What we want to do is we are not going to use the, um, the, the training to like go from 0 to, zero to 100 uh, writing music. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a very simple uh, creation engine that, that sort of knows how to already write a drum beat. A, a drum line or bass, right? Because it would take a long, long, long time. It'd take you the next couple of years just just to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, you know, something that can that can write a pretty simple uh, drum beat and bass line. 
Then we're going to layer on top of that. We're going to layer the, the, the training on top of that. So now the training is just sort of more of a, a preference as well. I don't like bass drums on beat one and three. I like bass drums on beat one and then the end of three or something like that. So um, so that way the, um, the training will be a lot faster and, and we're not going to have to go through these like just millions and millions of iterations. Uh, the deliverables, Windows WPF application. Um, I am going to ask you to save, save training and save the, the created files to a, a database so that people can go and, and have a list of like what maybe you've created and they can listen to them. So there will be a remote database and uh, I'd prefer it if you just did a MERN stack, MERN stack, MERN or MEAN or FERN or whatever, so one of those. Um, and then that way on the, on the uh, uh, website I can go and with my WPF app I can create it and it uploads to the website and, and then people can listen to it. Also from anywhere you can go ahead and, and pull in your training and then go ahead and use the, the app. So it's a pretty simple explanation and, and that's really uh, what I'm looking for.